then we'll um, pray and get started, okay? Um, it's in Lysidra. There was a man sitting who could not use his feet and had never walked. For he had been crippled from birth. He listened to Paul as he was speaking. And Paul, looking at him intently and seeing that he had faith to be healed, said in a loud voice, Stand up on your feet. And the man sprang up and began to walk. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we come to you today. And Lord, we thank you for the worship. We thank you for this rain. God, we just thank you for your presence that is here right, right now. And Lord, I pray that as we look at these, um, these two verses, I pray that your word would speak life into our lives. It would help us to become the better people that you desire us to be. And God, I just say thank you, Lord. Do the work that needs to be done in and through our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 She's already excited about me preaching. I'm going to make it a lot more. But uh, Acts chapter 14, verse, verse 8 through uh, 10, is a piece of scripture where we are looking at the life of an individual man who was born crippled. Like, we do not know uh, at what age this encounter he's having with Paul is taking place. But what we do know is that this is a circumstance in which he has been faced with since birth. Okay, so when you are faced with a circumstance that lasts probably longer than 21 days, because they say it takes 21 days to establish a habit inside of our lives, is that what we begin to do is we begin to not only take on that attribute, but we actually begin to define our life based upon that circumstance. So in, in other words, you know, for, for, for um, some of us, you know, if, if you've been going to the gym, for three weeks, um, you know, it, it, you haven't built that habit. But once you get to that 21 day mark, all of a sudden going to the gym has become a habit for you. So it means when you wake up, you, you're like, oh my goodness, I gotta go to the gym. And so you naturally go to the gym. And you know, I heard someone say very, very recently that most people give up inside of any type of change in which they wanna bring inside their life is around the 15th day. Because the 15th day is when your body starts telling you, this is something that you're doing that you normally don't do. And so once you get past the 15th day and you press on to six days later, your body all of a sudden clicks and says, wait a minute, this is part of who I am. And so we see inside the scripture that since we know it was longer than 21 days because this is not a 20 day year old baby that we're talking about. What we're talking about a man who was crippled is that he had at least lived his life for a number of years with this ailment. And to today what we're, we're talking about is, we're talking about grow forward. Now for you guys that, that, that don't know what grow is, grow is actually one of our three defining um, principles of who we are as a church. Last week, Pastor Mike talked about connect, which is, which is the first one, which for you guys that don't know, it is to connect, it is to grow, and it is to serve. That, that is who we are as a church. And so last week, he talked about connecting, and so today, I want to talk about growing. And there are some principles in which I feel that come out of this text as we look at the life of this young man, which, which really the Bible only talks, you know, three, maybe four verses about him. But I believe that there's truths inside of this four text, these four um, verses that will help us so that we can take on that characteristic of being someone who grows. Okay? So I've already laid out the idea that that. This was a man, because he was born this way, as having my notes, says the crippled man lived in a world of legs and feet. It said he always saw the bottom half of things. It says we've given little to no, that we're given little to no information about who this man was, but we do know that in order for him to actually get around to different places, he would have had to either crawl, basically with his hands, without his feet, first crawling, amazing arm strength, or someone would have had to pick him up and carry him. Now, I don't know about you guys, but the first question that comes to mind is, is that how did this brother get to church? How did this brother get into this environment 
in which he, we, he, we're basically introduced to the fact that Paul comes onto the scene. All of a sudden, Paul is having this meeting of some sort. I don't know how, they don't really know how big or how small it was, but we know that Paul was inside this environment where he was the speaker. He was the one communicating truth of the day. And as he was communicating to the truth to the day, what, 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 what we begin to see is that Paul's attention goes from the crowd to the individual. But as his attention goes from the crowd to the individual, we're like, oh my goodness, like, like most of us would probably be like, I know I am. When, when attention comes on me, when I'm in a crowd, you're like, oh no, don't look at me. Look somewhere else. You know, that point wasn't about me. Look, 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 look there, the person next to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's all about you. You know, we try to de deflect what is going on inside of the situation. But we see that inside of this moment, that this individual, he actually was trying to tap into what Paul was talking about. Because the Bible tells us that he intently was looking and listening to Paul. And so my first point, in order for us to be those that are growing, for us to move forward in all that God has for us, is that we have to learn to listen. Are you a good listener? And, and I think that the idea is, is that from this text, we understand that good listening is important. Now all my teachers in the house will be like, yes, amen, preach that. They need these people, they just need to listen. If they listen, they will be better students. But for the most of us who we have so many distractions around us, is that there's so much stuff to listen to. But we see that this individual, which we don't know how he gets to the scene, but he's on the scene, and when he's on the scene, he's listening. And so if we are to become the people that God wants us to become, is that we have to, to learn how to stay inside of that listening mode. We, we, we have to be the type of person that when something's going on inside of our situation, that we don't just hear what's going on, but we really listen to what's going on. You know, Jesus put it a certain way. He says, if you have hear ears, then hear. Wait, if you got if you got ears to hear, then you need to what? Then you need to listen. So everyone go out like this. You got ears? If you got something to touch right there, then listen to do this. It says, you know, uh, some other things in a sense I think that kind of help us in the sense of understanding what it means to be a good listener is that there's some good listening um, characteristics. So I'm going to give those to you. The first good listening characteristic is a listening in between the lines. You know, as, as people stand up here, or maybe you interact with someone, I mean, all of us do it unnaturally. Sometimes we do it naturally. Sometimes we just kind of flow in that moment. But someone's telling us something, and we're like, mm -mm, that ain't the real story. <laughs> and in that moment, you are listening in between the lines. You're looking at body language. You're, you're, you're looking at the choice of words that they're using. Where you're looking at where their eyes are going. You know, for you guys that that, that are liars, you know, if you look over to your left, you're you're, you're lying. Okay, so um, kind of helps you to not look there. So if you're lying, just make sure you keep it straight. <laughs> so you not only listen in between the lines, but you pay attention and ask questions. You know, um, it's 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 one thing just to be inside of environment and listen and listen and listen, but it's another thing actually to ask questions. You, you know, you know, one one of the great um, the things I, I have to put sweet into the Bible is when when Jesus was left in Jerusalem um, by his parents. You know, they kind of they, they thought he was with somebody else, with family or friends, and a few days go by, and then all of a sudden they're like, "Where's Jesus? I thought you had him." No, I thought you had it. Wow. Either that's a bad parenting, or no, no, no. But 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 it's a, you're like, man, what went around that situation? But where does it say that they found Jesus? They said they found Jesus in the temple. And they said that he was surrounded by other religious leaders, and they their mind was blown by the questions he was asking. Because in a revelation, revelation doesn't just come through the fact of you sitting and gleaning and hearing from someone who's wise. It's when you begin to ask that wise person questions and begin to draw information out of them. 
And, and see, and, and inside of our city, you might be like, oh, oh, okay, Teddy, well, when do we get to sit in wisdom? Because, you know, we, we, we kind of come on Sunday, there, there, there's folks that are here, and, and you know, is, is there question and answer time? And, and, and what I would say to you is, yeah, after church, you can probably come up to one of us as pastors and ask a question, but really a lot of those questions and answers are meant to be drawn out in a life group. As you're sitting around with other believers and that leader who has gone through the, the, the text a little bit and goes through the reflection questions, is that it's a moment where you're listening with more than just you sitting there, but you're listening with your behavior. You're allowing the word to interact with who you are, and as it interacts with who you are, it brings change into your life. And so that's why I believe that even as this man was laying, I don't know what posture he was in, whether or not they sat him up or whether or not he was laying down, but this man was listening to Paul. Is that he was listening to the place look, where he began to interact with Paul. And, and another um, label or another um, key to becoming a good listener is that you're present with your presence. Is that you understand it's not just about you showing up. But it's about you showing up, and when you're there, you're there 100%. And I know that is so hard for all of us, you know, because we have technology inside of our hand, and we just begin to, you know, oh, yeah, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, but hey, did you know about Facebook that there was a hand? Oh, what did you see? What you, you know, and so your mind is, is running, it's racing, and as you're doing it, but when you are there, be there. Be there. Be there inside of that moment. I mean, that's one of the things that, that, that a, a, a lot of people, you know, when they talk about raising children, is, is that with children, you've got to be there. You, you can't just be there in, in, a, in a sense of just your presence. You've got to be there emotionally. You've got to be there, you, you know, in every element of your life, understanding who that child is and raising that child in a way that they need to be raised. An another, you know, kind of thing in the sense of becoming a good listener is, is that you keep, um, you, you, you keep your finger on the post. In other words, you know what's going on inside of that conversation. You know what's going on inside of that situation. Is that you understand the ups and the downs. You understand the flow of the way that things are going. You know, and, and, and even in the sense of a service element, is that are you the person that is looking at your watch tomorrow, always oh, time to go? Or are you the person that is engaged into what's going on? And you're like, man, there's a sense of the Holy Spirit here. So I'm just going to lean in inside of this moment. And it's the thing of as a good listener is that when your finger is on the pulse, you go, man, I just believe God's about to do something. I'm not worried about the time. I'm not worried about the situation. I'm just worried about I'm trying to get and see what God is going to do in this moment. And so that brings us to number two. And number two, the, the second thing in a sense for us to grow and for us to mature into all that God wants us to look, be is that we have to have a willingness to learn. Are you willing to learn? Are you willing to learn something new or do you feel like, well, I've been a Christian for five years and you know what, I've done it all, been it all, seen it all, done it all. You've done everything, I'm perfect, there's nothing wrong with me. Well, guess what? Fly around the room right now and show us how perfect you are. Oh, nobody's flying? So that means it puts us all inside of that spot where there's things we all need to work on. There's things that each and every single one of us needs to be maturing on, understanding that it's not about, oh, I've reached level 10, and so I beat the game, and I'm done. Yee no, it's not like that. It's not Mario Kart. Yeah. It's not Mario Brothers. You know, the flag's not going up, and it's not going, dee -dee -dee -dee. you know, and it's not, you know, the fireworks, it's not the princess coming out, Woo! you know, it's none of that. <laughs> none of that. But it's about the idea that if you've been on this track for five weeks, Maybe even yesterday you gave your life to the Lord, you find yourself here today. Guess what? You are in the same place in regards to needing work just as a person that's been here 30 years. Now there might be things that, that, that they're not struggling with, that you're not struggling with, but at the same time we're all saying, God, I need more of you. Yeah. Lord, I need you to work on this in my life. I need to become a better husband. I need to become a better, you know, wife. I need to become a, a, a better father. I need to become a better employee, a better employer. You know, whatever you find yourself, as you're looking at your life and you're saying, God, I need your help. God, there's some things that I need to learn. And when you are that type of person who is constantly learning, you stay in a learning mode. A learning mode is open. A learning mode is, is willing to learn from the graphs that you see 
years, you're walking down the street, you're like, man, there's something I need to learn. What, what is that grass telling me? You know, someone needs to cut it, man, I need to cut some stuff out of my life. You, you know what I mean? I mean, you are constantly learning. You're constantly open to the Holy Spirit speaking to you and God just, 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 just having his way inside of your life. You're saying, you know what, I'm still needing to learn. You know, just, just just very recently, you know, we we had, you know, a lot of things and now just have to do with food. So I apologize for food and not you. I hear my sermon. But but this lady brought us this chocolate cake. Oh Lord have mercy, it was good. <laughs> it was good. It was. So we went to a restaurant, we cut open this chocolate cake, and we ate this chocolate cake, you know. And it, and it was good. Oh my lord, it was good. Right? Well, a week later, some other person brings a chocolate cake, and we start eating that chocolate cake. And we were like, man, this chocolate cake is good. And so then we started comparing, which you're not supposed to compare, so, you know, but we did, okay? So, um, so we said that chocolate cake was a 10, but this chocolate cake was a 12. This person still needs to learn something. That person needs to learn something from this person. And I'm telling you, both chocolate cakes were off the chain. But it's not as though you just arrive, oh, I've got the perfect life. Oh, I've got it all together. Oh, it's all day. No, we all stay in that learning mode. The second thing in the sense of you to stay in a learning mode is you keep your eyes in the right place. You know, where are your eyes? It says that he was intently looking at Paul. So in other words, he knew, you, you know what, he just, I, I don't, I see, I don't think, I see, and, and I don't know, so because they, the Bible doesn't tell us too much about this guy, but, but maybe he didn't show up that day expecting a healing, but he showed up that day expecting to learn. And when you show up expecting to learn, what you do is you open up the possibilities of what God is able to do in and through your life. Yeah. See, and the reason why I say that is because I don't think that this was a guy who was going around, you know, trying to find uh, well, well, what's the greatest, latest revival. I'm trying to get this. I'm trying to get that. I'm trying to get that. And when you try to do that, they, they, all power to you. But what I'm telling you that you're doing is you're trying to turn Jesus into your personal magician. Yeah. Oh, we put together all the right chemicals and I'm in or out of you know, Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. You know, no, 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 no. What it is is that you show up in an environment ready to learn and watch what God does. Because the thing is, is that you might be expecting one thing, but God is there going to give you another thing. And the thing is, is that why do we always got to be in a place where we're limiting the potential of what God is able and willing to do inside of our environment? It's that we've got to reach outside of ourselves and say, you know what, I am here to learn. I am here to seek. I'm here to, because the thing about it is if he really would have been showed up just for the healing, he would not have been in, he would not have been in tent. He probably would have been asleep until Paul got to the moment of, 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 of okay, it's time to heal. Okay, I'm getting up, you know, or hey, I'm laying up, you know. But but it's inside of him. He showed up just to learn. Come on. And I believe that as we show up to learn, as we show up and we say, God, I want to see something happen inside of church today. I want to see something happen. Not only maybe it's in my life, maybe it's in my neighbor's life, maybe it's in the life of someone whose first time is coming here. It's just as I show up with the intent to learn, God, I let you move. God, I let you shake up things. God, I let you to provide the miracle. You know, you know, it was so awesome. You know, after the first service, you know, you know, uh, you know, I, I, I prayed over some people, and then I sat down, and Donna got back up here, and I was like, "Okay, service is done. It's over with." Yes, but Donna was like, "Okay, you know what? We were gonna, we have a little bit of more time. We're gonna sit up here, we're gonna pray for people." She called the people up, and 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 and, and, and what happened was inside that moment, you know, one person got 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 up, and then I guess my friend was like, "Okay, well, if anybody really wants to come, so there, well, let's just pray for you." Well. Before Donna, Pastor Donna got down there to pray for that one person, three or four people came up. And then those four people came up, and then all of a sudden, you know, you know, I'm praying for a, 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 one, of the, one, of the, one of the ladies up here, and, and at the end of the prayer, she's weeping and crying. I'm telling you, she came with an attitude to learn. And as you come to an attitude of just learning, what it does is it opens up the floodgates of heaven. And I believe yeah. that God is going to meet her miracles. Why? Because she came with the perspective to say, I'm here to learn. 
And the other thing in the sense of if you have an attitude to, to learn or the mold to learn is you have a pen and you have some paper. So if you don't have a pen and paper, don't try to pull it out of paper. <laughs> but you come with an anticipation that something is going to be said. And the only reason why I say pen and paper, I mean, you can use your, 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 your tablet, your phone, whatever, whatever else you choose to use. But the reason why I say write it down or make it in a visible place is because we all are human and we forget things. I don't know how many times I've sat inside of a service and literally someone has said something prophetic over my life. And two days later, I'm like, I know you blessed me, but I don't know exactly what you just said. And if you're not ready to receive something, to ready there to learn, to get downloaded something inside of you, guess what happens? You forget about it. I mean, you, you, you might be like, yeah, they prayed for me, and I remember that moment. I don't remember what was said, but I'm telling you, what is said is just as important as you remembering that moment. The other thing is, is, is that when you have a pencil and paper, you understand the value of what you just written down, what you just wrote down. Whether it's even for your own personal life or whether or not someone has spoken something generally over the, over the, over the church or whatever it is, is that you understand the value of it. Another thing is you don't want to miss anything. When you bring that pencil, you bring that paper, you're understanding I'm becoming a student of what God wants to do. And the last thing in the sense of a learning mode is you remember that there's a price. That there's a price. There's a price for your freedom. There's a price that was paid for all of us to walk into God's victory and to walk into his salvation. That price, I mean, you might be like, oh no, it's free. You know, no, 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 no. Jesus went to the cross. He paid the price. But there is a price for the decisions in which you make. There's a price for you being inside of that learning environment. I mean, ask anyone who's, who, who's done any level of education. There's a price. You know, it's not just for free, but there is a price for the decisions in which you make. There is a price for the fact of you coming even in here today. Not, not, not talking about your high, not talking about your offer, but I'm talking about the fact that you had to get in your car, you had to use your gas to come here, you had to do the tires on, the, you know, uh, um, the wear and tear on your tires. There was a cost for you to be here. And the thing is, is that we need to understand that if we are to stay in that mode of growing and learning, is that we understand that just because it's hard, just because it's not easy, just because there's some challenges, just because someone says no, just because someone says we can't do it, just because things are, 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 are a little bit difficult inside of our lives, we can't just say, oh, well, that's not God. Right. Well, that's God must not want me to do that. Well, God must not. You know, no, 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 no. There is a price that needs to be paid. And we, under, we have to understand that even as we do justice work and as we do the things out inside of our community, there is a price for, for that. Sometimes it's the price of our, of, of our time. Sometimes it's the price of, of people looking at us a little bit weird. Sometimes it's the price of, of, of people talking about us. Sometimes it's the price of, of, of something else. But at the end of the day, we look at our decision and we say, I know that there's a price, but I'm willing to pay it. I'm willing to pay it to see lives transform. Is that there's a sacrifice that will need to be made and that we need to understand that. Is that I'm pretty sure that this guy is he's laying there and he's leaning into what Paul is saying and grabbing the attention of Paul that I guess I guess he just was like, you know, there's a price and I'm willing to pay it. There's a price and for me to stand here. I mean, because guess what? Everybody knew Paul preached long. I mean, I mean, in the, in, the, in the Bible, he had a guy fall out of a window because Paul preached for so long. You know, there, 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 there's other places where it says Paul preached all night. I mean, can y'all imagine that? I mean, I'm just kind of like, like, dude, I gotta go. My show's on, okay? You know, but, but Paul was a long-winded preacher, and I'm pretty sure. And, and, and this is not, this, this is not in the Bible. So this is just me, just, 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 just kind of throwing this out there a little bit. But I'm pretty sure, as this guy was intently looking at Paul, don't know what posture he was in, don't know if he had elbows on it, don't know if he was laying on one side, but let me just let you know, is that when you've been sitting somewhere for a long time or laying there for a long time, guess what? Your body begins to hurt. Yeah. Then you're talking about someone who literally inside of their elbow is only using half their body. Yeah. Imagine the pain that they would be in. And yet he knew, you know, no, 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 I'm here to learn. I'm here 
here to listen. I'm, 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 I'm here to see what God has in store for me. And as you do that, you have to understand that there is a price that needs to be paid if we are to be people that are willing to learn. Learn to see something you've never seen. Hmm. When, you're in an when you're in that mode of learning, learn to see things that you've never seen before. Yeah. You know, and I gave this example of saying, is, 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 is that, I mean, isn't it cool, like, like, like when you go on Pinterest, I mean, how many of you guys love Pinterest? Some of you guys are like Pinterest folks. Some of you guys are half the ring your hand because you don't want nobody to know. But you are a Pinterest person, okay? And 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 how how many of you guys have, have been doing something? You've seen something inside your room and you're like, man, I can't do nothing with this room. Man, my decorations are horrible. It, oh man, what am I gonna do with this in room and this environment? The lights are all weird. It's, you know, it's like there's something up there that, oh, what do I do with that? But all of a sudden you're searching on Pinterest and you get this whoop, whoop. I can do that. Oh, wow, I can do that to my room. I can do that to my space. I can, oh, and all of a sudden you come back a few days later and you pinterized. I don't know if that's really a word. Maybe I should uh, copyright that. Pinterized. You pinterized your room. And all of a sudden it looks totally different. Why? Because you took the time to go outside of your environment and learn something new. And you brought it back to the environment to bring change. And number three, let me hear you guys say number three. Then the third thing you need to learn how to do is you need to learn not to be afraid to do something you've never done. You know, think about it. He's intently there listening to Paul. He's not only there to listen, but he's also there to learn. And so inside of our lives, we, we listen to things. And then not only do we listen to them, but we allow those things to change who we are because we learn from them, okay? So then he gets to the place where he's learned something. And he's like, yeah, cool, I'm done. All of a sudden, Paul, because of his intent, looking at Paul. And let me just tell you something on the side. Does that have nothing against I know. But sometimes what we can do as people inside the audience is we can draw things out of the preacher because we are intently focused on, yes, I'm encouraging. Yes, when every time something goes up, amen. Or saying, hey, how you doing? You know, just, just there's something going back and forth that all of a sudden something that wasn't said in one service can be said in a new, in a new service because all of a sudden what you're doing is you're drawing more out of that person. I mean, what if, I mean, this, 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 this is just hypothetical, you know, this is just hypothetical situation, but what if next week when, when Pastor Mike speaks, speaking speak next week? Yes, okay, so next week when Pastor Mike, you know, you know, speaks, he gets up here, and we don't know who really is, but next time Pastor Mike, next, next time he speaks, he gets up here, and he has notes, they're all nice, nicely written and nicely typed up, but all of a sudden, he can't move to point two because we're drawing so much out of him in point one. Yeah. And you might be like, well, what if I don't need that message? It don't matter if you don't need it because guess what? If you're a learner, you're still going to do something with it. Yeah. It doesn't matter. You all, he preached that text already before. No, no, no. A learner says, come on, give me something new. Come on, what you got to say? And it's not a thing of, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, uh, uh, little you, but the thing I'm trying to encourage you, I'm trying to draw something out of you, and all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit falls and moves, and when he's on point one, can't move to point two or point three, because we've drawn something out of him. I mean, how cool would that be? If we as learners, we just step and say, I'm here to learn, I'm here to, 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 to help myself live the better life. I'm here to grow. The third thing, like I said already, is to learn not to be afraid to do something you've never done. And so as I was saying, you know, the, the, this, the, the, this, this guy was listening to Paul. Then all of a sudden, he was, he, he was understanding and learning from Paul. And then all of a sudden, Paul's attention focuses on him, like I said before. And all of a sudden, Paul says, get up. He doesn't ask his name. But he says, get up and do what? Walk. Okay, remember, this is a guy who from birth, that hasn't been possible. That means he had no, I mean, he had seen it. Because remember, this is a guy who, who his world was legs and feet. 
legs and feet. The operation of something that he could not use. Imagine the frustration of that. Imagine the very thing you always see is the very thing that you cannot do. Not to put a pun on it, but the, the whole idea that he could not walk, he could not run, he could not jump, he could not even crawl properly. Everything was inside of his realm of, of, of expression and moving. I mean, just imagine, you know, you, 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 a lot of you guys, you guys walk in your house, and what's the first thing you do when you walk in? You take your shoes off. This guy couldn't take that off of him. All that dirt, all that smell, all that nastiness, the fungus, everything, that wasn't just in his feet. That was in his hands. That was on his arms. That was on his, the lower part of his body. So we're talking about the, the, the reality here is that as Paul is literally saying this, this man could have stood there and said, Paul, ha, 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 you're funny. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, Paul, really? This is why I don't like coming to church because they always want to pray for me and then they want me to do the things I don't want to do. But no, 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 no. But because he had listened, because he had gotten to the place where he had learned it, when Paul spoke it, it wasn't a thing of, oh, no, not you again, Paul. No, he was, okay, I'm trying this in faith. And just imagine the fact that as he begins to lift himself up, the pain that maybe was there, maybe wasn't, maybe it just was inside of his mind because there was a mental block there, but he began to lift himself up. Maybe all of a sudden someone around him who began to, you know in church, there's always that one person who doesn't really believe what the pastor said, and so they start feeling sorry for everybody when everyone's getting prayed for. So they tell you, oh baby, it's okay. Maybe that person walked over and tried to help him, and he was like, no, 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 I got this right here because I've seen because I've learned, because it's I understand it, that as I take a step of faith, that my life will be different. And so I literally, as he lifts himself up, he begins to maybe get to the, 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 the waste part of his body. And all of a sudden it becomes, not only can I, I've got to go past where I've been before, because maybe before he's tried to lift himself up. But all of a sudden he's got to move that leg. He's got to move that hip. He's got to begin to rest all of his weight upon it. And then he's got to go, oh, okay, I couldn't do that before. Let's go one more step. Let's do the other side. Oh, yeah. So he's on his knees at this point. And then he gets to the place where he's like, I mean, how many of y'all ever fallen? I'm talking about really, really falling. And you got to your knees. You were like, praise the Lord, I got to this point. And you're like, but, but what's next? what really hurts. There's something about moving from this position to this position that is hard, okay? So he gets to the place, literally, where he leans forward and maybe puts his legs out a little bit like he's doing Pilates or something. And as he's doing Pilates, he begins to go, okay, we're going to do a child crawl. So he goes a little bit at a time. And all of a sudden, he's leaning straight down and he's like, I've never been here before, but I'm going even further. And as he goes a little further, Get away because I've seen, because I've heard, because I understand. Now I'm reaching out outside of my fears and I'm just going to stand up. And as he begins to stand up, you know how kids walk? I mean, I, I, I have a little kid who just started walking. And you know how they start to walk. It's a little wobbly. It's a little like, get out of my way. The hands are out there. They're just kind of like backing up. Don't come any closer. And all of a sudden, he began to go like this. Super saints. And he gets him to go and just all of a sudden he's leaning, he's rocking, he's trying to, you know, I mean, you know how it is. At least, I mean, I see little kids trying to walk around here. They're like, oh yeah, watch out. And all of a sudden he takes another step. And then maybe he got a little bit too excited. Because you know folks in church do get a little too excited. You know, so maybe he was like, oh yeah, let me jump. And then he was like, yeah, I jumped and I can do it. Why? Because I heard Paul preach one night. And I knew that if I learned from what he had to say, that guess what? Miracles can happen. And if you want to grow, if we're to mature into the people that God wants us to become, we have to understand that we cannot allow fear to drive us. Fear should not drive us. 
Fear should not drive us. I mean, think about it inside the, inside the Bible as Peter, inside of a storm, he's scared as all get out with the rest of the 12 disciples and all of a sudden you see Jesus show up on the scene. Yeah. And then Jesus doesn't just say, oh, hey, how you guys doing? What's going on? Hope you guys have a great day. No, no, no. Jesus calls him out to the water. Yeah. And I believe that we're the type of church because we are committed to growing is that each and every single one of us should be out there inside of the ocean. Yeah. Mm. You know, I remember when we, um, you know, were signed up to go to seminary and all that type of stuff. We had some people that were, you know, our professor sat down with, with me and a couple other folks. He said, okay, these type of seminaries over here, what they do is they basically, you are hanging out in the pool. And he goes, you can go hang out in the pool. The cool. pool is cool. You know, the pool, you know, you, you don't have to worry about salt water. You don't have to worry about animals. A lot of, there's a lot of safe elements to the pool. But the pool can be fun. You know, you can do cannonballs. You can swim back and forth. If you ever get scared, you, you, you can just swim to the edge and kind of hold on. You know, there's a lot of good things about the pool, but there's a lot of safe things about the pool. But he says, but these other seminaries over here, what they do is, is they take you on a little boating trip. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as you're on the boating trip, all of a sudden you're like, man, we went from the straits, all of a sudden we're in the ocean. Wow, it's pretty cool out here in the ocean. And they're like, hey, get, get out. <laughs> you're like, for real? Really? Yeah. And so, so, so he said, you know, that they, that they let you out. And you're like, oh, cool, okay, it's a nice little swim, the boat's still there. And they said, all of a sudden, what they do is they say, okay, cool, peace, see you at the shore. And they start rolling away. <laughs> and for him, what he was referring to us was, he was saying, I think y'all need to go swimming in the ocean. Yeah. Yes. Because when you're in the ocean, if you're like me, the first thing that goes through your mind is, da 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 you know, Jaws, you're like, oh my goodness, he's going to eat me. I know they said they haven't seen a shark here in 200 years, but he's going to come eat me. He's coming back. You know, and, and it's like, they're, 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 there's a whole world underneath you. There's fish. There's, there's coral reefs. There, there's, there's gigantic whales. There, there's a bunch of different stuff. But I'm telling you, God can meet you inside the pool. But God doesn't need to do much to meet you in the pool. I believe that God is calling us to be the type of church that we're out in the ocean. Yeah. We're out there handling issues that other churches are like, oh, well, no, we don't, we don't like those type of people. We don't deal with those type of issues. And I believe that, that that's fine and that's cool for, for some people to be inside the pool. But I believe that God is calling us to be an ocean type of church. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You know, to be ocean type of people who understand that there's resources out of there that, that are out in the ocean that are just for us. Why? Because we're not in the pool. There's blessings for us that because we're out in the ocean, that guess what? That aren't needed in the pool. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but I'm just believing that we can be those type of people. Yeah. I'm believing that we can be people that are not driven by our fears, by our own insecurities. But as we look at life, and just as that young man did, as he got up, yeah. is that we can get up. And while we get up, we can help others get up. Yes. And then as we do that, as we get to the place where we grow and we mature and we continue to grow and we continue to grow, I'm not talking about numerically, I'm talking about in silence. Yes. Because the thing is, is that all the other stuff will, will come as a result of us growing on the inside. Yes. And this is a verse, I didn't read in the first service, but it's, 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 it's verse number 11. It said that when that guy got up and people saw what had happened, they began to shout, God is among us. Yes. Yes. And yes, their definition of God was they were trying to call Paul the God, but God, but Paul knew, no, 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 no. let me point to the true God. And, and, and I believe literally that as we get up, our lives become a story that is written across the Bay Area. Our lives become a story that, that is written inside of this region. That people say, whoa, whoa, oh my goodness, look, God is there. Yes. Look, God can do it. Yes. God is able to bring healing. Yes. God is able to do this. God is willing to, to pour out his spirit upon us. I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm just a little young, 
young and naive and maybe just a little bit too passionate and crazy to think that God is not done working. That God is still willing and God is still open to do these miraculous things. So as I just end, let me, let me just read the points again to you again. The first thing is to learn to listen. A willingness to, to learn. The third thing is learn not to be afraid to do something you've never done before. To live in the ocean type of life. If you are here today, and really even as we talk about growing, the, the first step, I believe, to any of us growing is being in a relationship with Mama. Jesus. And so if you are here today, and you would love to be in a relationship with Jesus, I'm going to ask you a little while to raise your hand high enough and long enough, and I'm going to lead you in a prayer of accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. We also got a couple folks that, that would love to meet you after the service, kind of help you, tell you about our live groups, tell you the next step in regards to doing this. is more than just a decision you make today, but it's a decision for a lifetime. Yeah. As you might be saying, okay, well, what does that look like? What it does, it looks like is literally you saying, Jesus, I invite you into my life. I confess you to be my Lord and my Savior. And so if that's you, at this time, you want to invite Jesus into your life. You want to come into a relationship with him. I'm going to ask you to lift up your hand high enough and long enough in the air that I can see. And I'm going to lead you in a prayer of accepting Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Anyone else? So I look from the left to the right, to the front to the back. Thank you, Jesus. I'll repeat after me. Dear Jesus, I confess my need for you. Confess that I am a sinner. And at this moment, I invite you into my life. I invite you to be my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And, and, and if you raise your, your, your hand at the end of the school, at the end of the story, at the end of the, the at the end of the service, uh, Pastor Bill or Bill, you, you can raise your hand. Elder Bill, Bishop Bill, there he goes right, right there. You can just go see him after the service, and and, and he would love to connect with you, uh, and um, and help you any way that he can, get you into a life, because this is all about in the sense of us growing, is moving forward. Now the, the next thing I want to do is that. If any part of this sermon touched you and you really feel like, man, I want to become a better learner. I want to become a better listener. You know what? I'm faced with some obstacles right, right now that, that I'm afraid of. That we want to pray with you. And so if that's you, if you can just lift your hand up again, high enough and long enough for me to see. And just keep it up as, as a sign of faith. Just, just, just keep it up as I pray. Dear Father in heaven, we come to you today. And Father, you see every single one of these hands. And Father, you know exactly what it is that they need. And Father, I pray, Lord, that they would leave out of this place different. Lord, I pray, Father, that the blessing that was on Joshua, Lord, as he took over the, the mantle of Moses, Lord, was that every single place in which he stepped that you would give to him. Lord, I pray, Father, for every single one of these people. And I pray that same prayer, I pray that same anointing, I pray that same blessing would be upon their lives, Lord. I pray, Father, that wherever they step, Lord, that you would give it to them, Lord. Give it to them. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray for obstacles to be removed. In the name of Jesus, I pray for fear to be gone. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare that they have the victory. And so, Lord, we come to you today. And, Lord, we give their circumstance to you. And, Lord, I ask for you to blow on it, for you to move in the middle of their circumstance.